Testing, one, two, three. <laughs> you better be at our best, man. Be at our best. Yeah, it's gonna be a boring one today. Those guys don't all suck. You son of a bitch. Hey, Sam, any score, any place, you know we bring well. We bow down, we'll pull up on anybody and get it done. Suck it, Raiders. He is dead. I love the Jets, back. Joe, go fast. They're the next team on our schedule, and we're trying to do something big here. We're trying to win a Super Bowl. It's another beautiful day. It is. Right. Welcome back, everybody, to the Charger Chat. I'm your co-host, Wooldog, sitting with Duggan Bros, like hugging Duggan. I'm here. I'm ready for some hugs after that, that loss. We need some hugs, folks, and let's not forget Kyle the Coach Duggan. What's up, guys? Yep. Yeah, um, I want to start with apologizing about not having an instant reaction, but we we're fans, man. We're we're not pros. We are fans and we were hurting hard. I don't I didn't have there was it in no me. way I could not have dragged I was actually with Kevin to watch the game and I couldn't drag that man to get in front of a microphone. There would have been no <laughs> possible way. Do you, do you want to hear how depressed I got? I went and sat down on my computer and started to watch Brian's song. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if, you've, oh I don't know if you know what Brian's song is. It's about <laughs> uh, Gail Sayers and uh, pick up piss. Piccolo, Brian Piccolo, Brian yeah. Piccolo, and he gets cancer and dies. Like that's the vibe I was feeling <laughs> on Sunday. It was a sad one, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. and I, I couldn't <laughs> give that to you guys. Couldn't spread yeah. that to Goodness you. Goodness gracious! Yeah, that's so. That's we we needed heavy. a couple of days to cool off. I'm feeling better now. I'm feeling yeah. I'm feeling alive again, guys. I'm feeling alive. Yeah. Yes, we we've all got our legs back, and we'll 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 get there, folks. We we just have to continuously remind ourselves that we're Charger fans and what to expect in the game. So uh, just to kind of break down the game that we had this last week, uh, you know, there's, it's not all, it's not just the loss. There's a lot going on in this game, just as much as there was in Kansas city. There's a lot to take away from this considering how new this offense and this defense is, but let's take a look at it. So first quarter sees the chargers deferring the kickoff to the Panthers. A couple three and outs later, Panthers get the first points on the board with a 29 yard field goal. All right. No big deal. Chargers dealt with a fumble from Herbert on the next drive. That was a little questionable to me, but whatever. That resulted in the Panthers putting up another three points. At the start of the second quarter, Chargers finally get some points on the board with a 12-yard run from Eckler. Woo, woo. However, the lead was short-lived as Carolina's next drive resulted in another field goal. Hmm. Chargers next drive ended with a turnover from Joshua Kelly fumbling the ball. Ah, Panthers Rookie. capitalized on it with a touchdown. However, the big mitts of Isaac Rochelle kept them from getting an extra point. That was pretty impressive to get two block kicks in a week or back to back block kicks, I should say. And then Chargers felt like turning the ball over once more before the end of the half and Carolina not wanting to be too greedy, settled for yet another field goal, sending the score in the half Chargers down 18 to seven. Yeah. Yeah, we've been there before, but we knew we were going to get the ball back at the second half. So Chargers couldn't get anything going, though, until the third offensive possession of the half, seeing Badgley get his first field goal of the day, tightening the gap to eight points. However, the Panthers decided to rally back and get a field goal of their own uh, at the start of the fourth quarter, bringing the score to 21 to 10. Chargers finally decided to also rally back with a 16 play drive, ending in Keenan Allen's first touchdown of the season. However, came up short when we went for the two points, leaving the score 21 to 16. And Bosa decided to wait until the fourth quarter to finally get his first sack of the day, causing the Panthers to punt and give the Chargers a minute 46 to try to get to the end zone from the one yard line. Chargers made a somewhat impressive final drive to try to beat the Panthers, but ultimately came up short uh, from a tricky reception slash handoff slash what was happening there and handed the Panthers their first win of the season and taking us to one and two. So it was uh, it was an emotional game. This was a game that uh, I tried to share with the Duggan boys. And I'll I'll tell you, folks, there was a lot of screaming, a lot of uh, <laughs> echoed cursing Kim coming from my laptop. <laughs> but uh I hope we didn't. I hope we didn't piss your parents off too much with no, how we did, dirty we mouth did it Duggan we were. Adam, Adam <laughs> muted us. I know because we kept like Adam, Adam, and he's just watching. I kept kind of like the turning game. the volume down just a little bit and just trying to focus on what the game was. And my dad's sitting off in his recliner to the right of me, so it was just like let's just focus on the game. And then when something good happens, I'll come back to the Duggan boys and check yeah. in and see how they're Unless, doing. But, you want to hear the the Kevin's uh, fuck, 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 fuck,
So that's yeah. when you get in trouble with the parents. Yeah. And, and it was my mom's birthday of all days. So we were trying to keep <laughs> sorry, it. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Mama Wooldog. <laughs> we were trying to keep the, the swears to a minimum, but it couldn't be helped. I love, I love the energy from the Duggan boys. You know, I, me and my dad, we, we cheer on the charges, but we don't necessarily yell and scream as much as you guys. So that's a lot of energy that I, that I miss from charger games. So dad, if you're listening, I'm sorry, we've got to start yelling and screaming. Uh, yes. <laughs> so it was, it was a tough game to swallow. Um, we were so riding off the high of Herbert having such a great game in week two against the Super Bowl champs, the Chiefs. And even though it resulted in a loss, we walked away feeling pretty good. But for some reason, this game, when we took the loss, it was a little bit of heartbreak. And I don't know. It's hard to explain. It was brutal for me because like <laughs> that was one we should ha have had no problem. It's like we played down to our opponent's skill set and we just did not look like the team from last week. <laughs> The fumbles, the Joshua Kelly fumble. There's the, a lot of turnovers, man. Just a lot of stuff. And there's some of it we'll get into later that I was just really disappointed with. But it was just kind of um, a hard game from beginning to end. Like, we've been pretty good at staying in these games. And it just didn't just didn't work. It nope. just didn't work. And it was just you had a lot of quarters to kind of sit there and just be pissed off. Because we never really did anything to really get that excited about. You know, the couple touchdowns were good, but we were still behind. Right. So it was it was hard to really enjoy that win or right. that that loss big time. What did I say win? Yeah, right. It's so it's so different. Last week we lose to the the Chiefs. Obviously a better team, so that's why you don't feel as bad about it. But it's crazy how two losses, they're still an L. It counts the same amount towards us making the playoffs, but you leave one feeling like, oh my god gosh we just did not play good like i i don't feel good about the way that our team's playing no they didn't have and christian the first, mccaffrey dude how are right. we what are we doing but it's just it it's just at the end of the day a loss is a loss it's that we ha we got the same result at, at both games they both count towards us making the playoffs winning the super bowl but you leave as a fan just like a punch in the gut like do we have it in us to do it you know like what we need like something has to change yeah it, it, it well i mean there was turnovers there was penalties uh, it, it, we walked into this game feeling pretty tough to, to tie with the Super Bowl champs. And we only lost in an overtime, but we still held our own. And to go into this game, it's like, they're Owen two Panthers. What do we got to worry about? And apparently we had quite a bit to worry about, unfortunately. But then you go and look and see how the Kansas city chiefs played on Monday night and just ran all over the Baltimore defense. Right. And everyone's like, so the chargers have the best defense in the entire league. Like, that's how we played the previous week. If we're healthy. So it's just like insult. Like Monday, I was like, uh, like stretching out of my crappiness. And then that happened. And I was like, oh, man, we're still pretty but good. I, okay. I think, right. Yeah, I think our defense is still we still performed really well. They they had the ball on our side of the field the, the entire game. first half, yeah. right. the entire first half. And then the second half, when we had finally made them start on their own side of the field, they didn't really put up any points. Mm -hmm. And every time they got into a scoring position, our defense stiffened up and they kicked, they kicked five field goals. Right. So it's like our defense still had a great game. It's just those turnovers and penalties, some deserved, some very much so not deserved. Very not cost deserved. Us. Yeah. But it, it, without those turnovers, those you don't even think about those penalties. Right. That Mike Williams pass interference, probably don't even talk about it. He probably don't remember it because we would have oh, won by several scores. I remember. But it, <laughs> it was, yeah. So it's just like, I don't, it's just not not a good performance. But the defense still played pretty tough. Defense absolutely played tough. The, the struggle for us was on offense. We just, we had a hard time rallying down to, to put it in the end zone. We did a couple times. We did it. We got one more touchdown than the Panthers did, but they just kicked more field goals than we did. We just couldn't ever get in a scoring position. Can I say one thing I've noticed from back-to-back -back weeks? So we do these trick kind of plays, these kind of weird stuff, and we did it at the end of, what is it, the second half, the end, end of the first half on the last game where we did kind of a, a deep throw to Keenan Allen, and then he was supposed to, like, lateral it back to somebody. We did that last week. Mm -hmm. What happened? He missed tossed it and it went on the ground and they had to go recover it. Mm -hmm. Same thing happened today. Like, I don't know if Keenan is the best person for these, this lateral job. I'm wondering if he put somebody else out there cause it happened two weeks, you know, and I know you could have arguments for that, but I'm yeah. seeing that like his energy level, when he gets the ball, he's kind of like this frenetic kind of like all over the place guy. Um, and it's, you know, he's smooth when he he's breaking and running his route, but when he catches the ball, it's kind of like this frantic kind of energy that he has. 
And you can't have that when you need to calmly lateral the ball to get it rolling. So that kind of stood out to me. It's not a bad thing. He probably would get that nine times or eight times out of 10 because the first two didn't happen. So um, <laughs> it's just it's something I noticed. Um, still love you, yeah. Keenan. Yeah, the first play was more of a, holy crap, let's throw the ball 400 times or back lateral at 20 times to see if we can get something to happen. Right. That one was like a full-on designed hook and ladder. And the perp, I mean, obviously you throw to Keenan because he's going to get, the defenders are all going to look at him. He mm-hmm. gets the ball. They're going to swarm a little bit more than if you throw it to a, a Guyton or in one of our the KJ Hill. Mm-hmm. When Keenan, he's making that move, they're going to all swarm in, and that's what opened that up so big. It was so open. Eckler had, if Eckler had got the ball, yeah. But at, at the end of the I, people are like, oh, if Eckler could have just got I was like, dude, we should not have been depending on a trick play right. with no time left. Like, right. yeah. if that's we were the farthest relying thing on from the issue play, of our football team. Exactly. Yes. If we were relying on one play, then – it didn't all come a trick down play. to that. There but were it was several other plays. executed, which was it was all, it would have been it was so, so cool. close. Could you imagine that walk off home run? Oh yeah, my god, that would have been, been cool. Sweet. But could have shit absolutely. So looking at some of the stats, uh, let's see. So Justin Herbert, uh, so far to date, uh, thirty five of forty nine attempts so far, three hundred and thirty yards. Or was this just the last game? This, this is yeah, this game. is just the last game. He threw the ball 49 times. Yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I knew he threw it a lot, but geez, 49 times. Okay, well, he completed 35 of 49 just this last game, folks. Over 330 yards. I think I saw the stat when the game was on. He's the second or third quarterback to throw three or back two. Back-to-back 300-yard games. Back-to-back 300-yard games in their opening of the of coming to the NFL. That's pretty impressive. And 71.4 completing percentage isn't too shabby. Uh, you know, we just got into that situation of like that Phillip Rivers had to deal with, with just dumping the ball quickly. I mean, he only averaged, uh, 6.7 yards. Well, and the thing that kind of stood out to me that kind of pissed me off, we did that, um, fan kind of the additional episode last week where we talked to the Carolina Panthers fan, uh, podcast. Right. And they said they had, didn't get it. They haven't had any sacks and very few pressures. This is the most I've seen our offensive line give up pressures and they gave up two sacks this game. Yeah. So I don't know where that came from. I don't know if that was, we jinxed it by going on that podcast, but um, that was not the, my favorite stat line um, for him for sure. No, the, the, yeah, the, the, the pressures for Herbert just, I don't know where they were coming from. It, it's not like we yeah. have a great offensive line, but it's played better the first two games, but I know, I think yeah. St. Louis came out partway through the game and uh, Trey Turner, I think also didn't play Belaga probably didn't play it his out. best. So it's just like, and you throw 49 times. That's a lot more opportunities that is a lot. to get pressured. Absolutely. So yeah. And you're having to, this, you're having to this is, this is finally one of those things where some of the analysts who were saying, look, this team has a whole week to prepare. They can game plan, blah, blah, this and that. And I think you saw that, you know, like they were running a lot of weird stunts and we have a somewhat inexperienced line. They weren't blitzing a huge amount, but their linemen were kind of in and out, weaving around. There's a couple of times Feeney got that got caught standing up watching. That was on that one sack that kind of came up the middle. Um, but yeah, like you said, you throw 50 times. Def- defensive linemen are going to start to pin their ears back. You get down by a lot. Defensive linemen know you're throwing the ball. You, right, you totally. those type of things start happening. You're going to be, you're, it just becomes more, um, more, they know it's coming, you know, like it's more uh, anticipated. So mm-hmm. they're not, oh my, like, cause we, our running game was so effective against Kansas City. Those D linemen couldn't pin their ears back and come after the quarterback. Mm-hmm. They had to stay on, they had to make sure it was a pass and it had to be a very obvious passing down for them to come after you. Or they were a little bit like, oh, if I get up field too far, one of these little sneaky backs are going to cut up underneath me. So, but in this last game, we threw for 50, we threw 50 times, you know, like right. they know we're going to, we're down, we're going to throw the ball a lot. They're coming after. So, yeah, it played a huge role. You cannot play from behind or those sacks are going to come in bunches. Absolutely. Yeah, looking at, uh, I mean, speaking of the run game, looking at Austin Eckler, uh, just this last game had uh, rushed for 59 yards, uh, received 84 yards. So, I mean. And a touchdown. He had a game. And he finally had a touchdown, finally put points on the board, which was great for him. Uh, And just comparatively to the Kansas City game, I mean, when he was, uh, rushing against Kansas City he was averaging over five yards a run, almost six. And 
and was averaging almost 14 yards per receive. Like that's, that's pretty dang impressive. Uh, you know, Joshua Kelly also has proven to be a great running back as well. It's just that fumble, man. Like that just oh, killed dude. us. If you look at the numbers, like coach Lynn was pissed at Kelly. Like he went from last week against Kansas city, 23 attempting rushes mm-hmm. last week. He had eight. Yep. He had eight. Yep. Like coach is no joke about the fumbling stuff, man. right? No joke. And I don't know if you saw the next time Kelly got in the game, he went through the whole two hands. I don't know if anybody here has seen the program, but we just watched it recently. And there's a, the thing the coach does where he hands the ball to his rookie um, running back. And he says, you carry this ball around campus. And if anyone brings this to me, but you, you're going to wish you were never born. And like the next thing, you know, he's walking around (laughs) campus, holding the ball real tight. And he gets like a fumble at his classroom. Like, that's how I felt. Like, Dude, you you better not. Coach is pissed. Right? Yeah, you got to show that you're you're able to handle those situations. And the only way you're going to be able to do it is when you got two hands. Um, and then also, speaking of some uh, great games last week, Keenan Allen, uh, holy smokes, over 130, 130 yards, uh, averaging 10 yards uh, reception. You know, he was targeted 19 times, almost almost half of Herbert's throws. So finally great to see Keenan Allen coming out. I mean, it was a rough start on that first game against Cincinnati, only, uh, only pulling in four receptions, but finally getting up to 13 last game. That was great to see. It's a, just a good thing to take away from. I think an interesting here too, is like a reminder that we didn't have any preseason games. Like these guys are getting up to speed. Dude, I've been you know, saying it's it. just, <laughs> and, and the new, new quarterback, this is the second game. Like, look what happened. They, they're built a rapport during the week and they got it rolling. So yeah, it's, We're going to get better guys. We're going to get better. Right. I I mean, again, this is still a fresh, this is a pretty fresh team. I mean, for a long time, the two uh, most veteran players on our team were Phillip rivers and Antonio Gates. And neither of those guys are here anymore. I was trying to conceive of who the oldest person was or who's been the longest tenured charger on our team. It's probably like Melvin Ingram or something like that, or even Keenan Allen. So you know, these are, there's a lot of fresh talent here that still needs to kind of find their groove. And I'm not trying to make excuses for the team. You want them to win, but at the same time, cut them some slack, man. It's still 2020. We're still dealing with pandemic situations. We just saw two teams today, uh, Minnesota and Tennessee that had some positive COVID cases. And I'm just thankful that the chargers aren't one of those teams that are having to deal with that kind of a situation. It hasn't popped up yet. It's only popped up for coach Lynn and we didn't even know about it. So uh, you know, just thankful that the, that the boys can actually go out there and play. If something happens for us, 2020, great. If not, we know we have confidence in the guys that we have, and we know who's going to be coming back next year. I'm not counting the season as a loss. I want to see the boys play. And I, if we can make it to the playoffs, you know, let's go. But at the same time, let's cut these guys a little bit of slack. Um, and looking at the defensive side, Joey Bosa, He's got a sack every freaking game. He's looking to get 16 sacks this season. So uh, he's certainly on track and, you know, just really bringing the pressure on the, on our quarterbacks. And it was, I mean, it was a lot more reliant on him this last game as well. Melvin Ingram, as we mentioned, uh, is on IR. So he's out for at least three weeks. Justin Jones is out for at least three weeks. So, I mean, there's a lot of guys that are getting an opportunity to play here that don't always necessarily get that chance. Um, and then looking at Kenneth Murray as well, our first round draft linebacker uh, was able to get to two tack, two solo tackles, three assists. Combo? What's a combo? It's two That's plus three combined, equals five. Combined tackles. Two plus three equals five. So why don't they just say total? Why don't yeah, they just they say total? Just, they should. You're right. They should. <laughs> why they got him? Everybody else gets a total. Why? Ah, for Pete's sake. All right. <laughs> but he did get a tackle right, for a get... loss as well. No, I'm an idiot. I'm keeping it in. Um, <laughs> so two I mean, plus three, two five. plus three, apparently equals five folks. Uh, this is, this is math with wool. Breaking dog. news. <laughs> <laughs> so there wasn't a whole lot of news uh, to talk about for the chargers this week. So we just decided to kind of take a look at some stats, which is pretty great. And we're also going to mix things up a little bit here and we're going to toss it over to coach here a little bit early on. I I'll, I'll be honest with you, coach. And I talked to my dad this last game and he's like, man, I really like that coach's corner. Kyle, he's such Aww. a smart guy. He's just really knows the X's and so O's. Kind. So, um, I, I think my dad is not alone when, uh, when, when I say that coach's corner is a really insightful part of this podcast. So let's, 
toss it over to the coach and see what he's got for us this week. Yeah, so I wanted to look at a couple of different little, um, there's three different sections I wanted to look at. Um, two of them were kind of the key plays. One, we're going to touch on Chris Harris, um, him getting hurt and us just today putting him on the IR, uh, which hopefully is just three weeks. Um, but what that's kind of do for our defense, who needs to step up? Uh, the first thing is our offensive line play. We're all a little bit worried. Um, coming into the season, we were a little bit worried. <laughs> Sam Tevy was kind of the question mark at, at left tackle. And now he's the only guy that's still left at the spot he was intended to play. For the record, Offensive line has been a concern every year. That's true. <laughs> every year. Yeah, yeah. This year, we're, we're feeling at least a little bit better getting Trey Turner and Balaga, but yeah, it's it's back to how it was. So it, yeah, it, so there's there's been a lot of shuffling pieces. So I wanted to go look back. I wasn't going to watch every single play and diagnose every single lineman on look at percentages. I just I just wanted to look at a couple of the key plays. So the the play that really bugs me the most was that um, strip sack of uh, Justin Herbert, which was a huge costly play, the first fumble of the day. Now whether you thought it was a fumble or not, it's that's a doesn't really matter because the referees the referees for decided no, it, it was yeah um survey says um yeah yeah but here's what here's what the 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 scary um and the worrisome part of that play is um so we only had three people going out on routes what that means is we had seven linemen oh, slash tight ends into block four players oh, so we had a double team on three players and one one on one that we needed to win with our most veteran offensive lineman at right tackle. And he just got ran right around. Mm. We had Keenan and Mike go, went on routes. Austin leaked out of the backfield. We had our two tight ends, Hunter Henry and Virgil. Both were in there to be additional help. Right. Sam Tevy, our whole offensive line. Belaga was still in the game at this point. Belaga's hurt, man. It's clear yeah. because this guy just gave a speed move or speed rush around the edge. The only guy that we needed to beat. And the only thing he couldn't do was let him beat him to the outside. If he let this guy beat him to the inside, he would have had his guard there to help. Cause we had seven guys in there to block four. And the only thing he could not do was let him beat him around the edge. And that's exactly what happened. That should have never been a strip sack. It's just, it's, it's a scary, worrisome thing when we can only rush three guys and we still commit fumbles. Mm. It, the other and it, the other thing that I will say though is with better better recognition from Jaybert, he knows that if he if he knows pass protection and he knows what we were doing, he would have hopefully stepped up just a little bit more. Uh, he took a he took a pretty big drop. Uh, they were a little bit longer developing route, so he took a good five step drop. But with that speed rush, and you know that you have seven right there getting those guys, they're not going to get moved on a double team. We had two offensive linemen to every one defensive lineman that was rushing. Step up and help blog out a little bit. So if he gets that that speed rush, they can just wash him over the top. Mm. So Jaybert got a little bit too deep on his drop. Probably could have stepped up. Um, but Belaga needs to be able to win a one, one on one. We just needed to win one, one on one that play for that not to happen. So that, that was a little bit, um, that was a little bit disheartening to watch. Um, anytime you have three wide receivers and that they had, they had seven guys dropped in coverage. They had seven defense defenders trying to well, against three routes. You better have all day to sit back there and make a decision right. or be able to get out of there and run for a couple of yards. There should never be a strip sack uh, in that situation. So that was a little bit of a bummer. I'm trying not to be a downer. That was just a bummer to see. Yeah, we got to critique. We got to be, we got to be honest with ourselves and with our team. If we're going to have these kind of uh, yeah. dissections of these plays. So it's good to know. I, I think it's yeah. good. It's not necessarily negative. It's, it's honest. <laughs> Yeah, we should not lose a seven seven v four. Um, so the next play I wanted to look at was the Herbert pick because when we watched it live, it looked real bad. It looked like he basically just threw it right to this guy, and it was like, a, oh, that's a rookie mistake. Which come on, he's an NFL quarterback. I, I'm not going to give him that out. He made a mistake. He made a bad throw. Philip Rivers does the same thing, and he's played in the league for 400 years. So <laughs> I wanted to go back. <laughs> I wanted to go back and look and see like what exactly happened that that swayed him. Now, some of it may have been this pass rest that he's been getting. He would looked a little bit antsy to get the ball out. Um, but what happened was the defense showed a cover four. So that's very deep coverage. So that puts the corner and two safeties all playing quarter coverage deep. You have three guys underneath. That's usually th your three linebackers or uh, a linebacker and a nickel. And 
what happens is one of the linebackers who's lined up like over the offensive tackle, he'll have the flat. The flat is anything from the sideline to the hash marks. That zone is his. So anyone that comes into that zone, he has to defend. So on quarters coverage, that's what it looks like. In cover three, which what they dropped into, you have three defenders deep and four up top. So you're more able to throw the ball deep because you have a, there's more opportunities up the seam. Mm. Okay, so when we showed up, when we line up on the ball, they, they showed cover four. So you're thinking, all right, I got to drop the ball off underneath. I'm not going to be able to take it over the top. There's too much help back there. Then last second at the snap of the ball, their strong safety drops down into the hook curl, which is right on the hash mark. Sorry if, if this isn't making sense. I'm going to do my best. I'm to, picturing to it. I'm it drawing down. a mental okay. image in my head as you're saying it. So good. So now you have four def four defenders underneath and three over the top. Mm -hmm. The soft spot in cover three is your seam. A seam route is when you run right up the hash marks because that's right in between two zones, the safety and the corner. What, what we did is Justin saw cover four and he thought, okay, I'm going to throw this out to Keenan and it's going to be wide open. They dropped into cover three. If you, I don't know if, I'm not saying he didn't see it. I'm just saying if he had for sure seen it and he, he had a little bit more time, he would have seen, if you guys go back and watch the play, he would have seen Keenan running right down that seam completely wide open. But it looked like he was a little bit excited to get Keenan his 150th yard of the game, his 20th catch, right. and he tossed it. That corner read it really well. Um, the corner was really baiting the throw. So he started his drop into a cover three. He has the deep third. Mm -hmm. So he started to drop back. And then right as he, um, Justin didn't let him get deep enough. And right when he came off to throw that corner, just sat right underneath Keenan's route. Mm -hmm. So the corner played it really well. If, but if Justin would have waited a half a second longer or one more second, he would have seen Mike wide open and it would have been a touchdown. So the, the corner kind of, he played it well. He played it really well. It wasn't a bad read. I think he got a little bit messed up by the, the cover four dropping into three, and that corner kind of baited him a little bit. Needless to say, it was a bad throw. Um, but, yeah, it, it, maybe it's getting the ball out too quick. He's a little bit worried about his line. Uh, it was just a pre-snap read that didn't, didn't turn out right. Um, and the final thing I want to look at is obviously Chris Harris going down. Our defense is what's going to keep us in games. We didn't, di even though we were a much better team, we still didn't belong in that game with those three turnovers and some of the penalties we committed, yep. but our defense kept us in it. So are they going to be able to, here's what I'm, here's my, the storyline for next week is whiny Magoo. Desmond King is going to get an opportunity to step up. He wanted to play. He's going to play because yeah. it's, 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 it's not going to be, he's, we're not replacing a corner. It's already become, it's already become very um, evident that Chris Harris has been playing our nickel. He's been playing inside. Mike Davis has played 84% of snaps on Sunday and he, he only plays on the outside. So it's, it's clear and evident that for whatever reason, our defensive coordinator has decided that Mike Davis on the outside with, with, with Henry, or, or I'm sorry, Mike Davis on the outside with Chris Harris on the inside is a better combination than Chris Harris on the outside with Desmond King on the inside. And that's what, that's what made Desmond mad. That's what upset him. I don't get what's going on. He's going to get an opportunity to prove himself. Mm -hmm. um, because with Chris out, we're sliding in that nickel corner slash safety type. That's going to be Desmond. It was the whole last part of the game against the Panthers. As soon as Chris Harris came out, Desmond was in every play the rest of the game. So he's going to get an opportunity to prove himself. So I'm really excited to watch what he does. Hopefully he uses this, a chip on his shoulder. I'm going to go prove everyone wrong. Uh, and it doesn't, it, it doesn't turn into a selfish, trying to take too many chances, getting in bad spots. From the um, immortal so words of the little giants, you can talk the talk, but can you walk the walk? <laughs> there you go. That's, right. We're going to, we're going to find out if he can walk the walk. So um, I'm excited. I mean, we were all so excited about Desmond King coming into the season. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the fan base was all, Oh, it's a no brainer. Desmond's going to play on the inside. Harris on the outside with Hayward on the other, on the other corner. It's going to be great. All of a sudden after camp, Desmond's playing half, less than half the snap. So like, I'm, I'm excited to see what he can do. He wants the snaps. He's confident in himself. He may not have handled it the right way, but we're going to see what he can do here come Sunday against Tom Brady. Absolutely. God. There you go. Thanks folks. Kyle. Good one. Coach, Good one coach breaking it down, letting You're us welcome. know where we need to improve. So hopefully uh, Lynn and Telesco and any other guys that need to be paying attention are, 
Um, for the record, though, folks, I am going to be going on fantasy football and changing my team name to the Whiny Magoos. Um, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. What you need to change it to, me and Kevin, me and Kevin watched the program this weekend, and the starting tackle <laughs> in that in that movie, his name is Bud Light. Um, what is Kaminsky. it, Bud Light? Kaminsky. Bud Light Kaminsky. That's what they call it. That's the Bud fantasy, Light ultimate Kaminsky. fantasy football name. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's so epic. That's great. So, excellent. All right. Well. Now, now that we've gotten a lot of the, now that we've been honest with ourselves on uh, what we <laughs> need to take a look at and look forward to, uh, what were some of the favorite moments of the game, guys? So I think for mine, it was, you know, the, it's the flashy answer. It's Justin Herbert, you know? Yeah. And there was one stat that I saw. Um, it was on Twitter. Was, I think his name is Gav, Gavino Borquez dropped this tidbit of information. I thought it was like, oh, wow, this is like a big deal stat. So Justin Herbert on third downs through his first two games, he's 16 for 20, 193 yards, two touchdowns, zero interceptions wow. with 140 passer rating. And he's converted 14 first downs, 12 passing, 12 rushing. Two That's rushing. clutch Two rushing. Yeah. gene shit. That is clutch wow. gene shit and be able to calm yourself down and, and do this. So this is real. This is, this is, Real stats. Wow, I'm, that's I, extremely I, impressive. I'm not gonna lie; I didn't fully double check. That I did <laughs> didn't do a full double check, but this was right. too good to be true, and this lifted yeah. my spirits. So, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, take it. Yeah. I'm counting <laughs> you, man. I hope this is right. But Tweet if that's the case, hallelujah. So that was my favorite part of the game was Gavino Borquez and his stats. <laughs> that's awesome. Excellent. What about you, Old Dog? I think for me, my favorite part of the game was seeing our special teams being able to block uh, kicks back to back weeks. Like mm. that doesn't happen often for us. And for us to get in and back to back, like special teams, I mean, outside of our offensive line, special teams has been a concern for the chargers for many years. And so to see at least our, some uh, positive plays, the positive plays for us to get a, a, a hand up in there, you know, week two was Jerry Tillery. This last one was Isaac Rochelle. Uh, was excellent. Like it, we, we we need those kind of stops. And I, I mean, I just wish it just, I just wish it didn't instill hope in me that we had a chance to win, <laughs> you know, yeah. it should, you should always have a hope. I know there's, that we have there a should always be a hope, but it always ends with us <laughs> so sad afterwards. Um, but it's good to see the special teams, uh, being able to step up and, and get those hands on the ball. Um, well, how about you, Coach? What was what was the shining moment for you? Yeah, so I have. Um, I know I always do this, but I have a one A and a one B because as I think dick. of it, don't, so more than one is fine. We'll never turn yeah, that down. So my favorite moment or my favorite kind of thing that happened in the game was Keenan lighting back up. Yeah, um, finally. I, I I just think that he is. Uh, he's such a force, like leader on our team and in the locker room. That I feel like if he buys into Justin Herbert as our quarterback of the future, it'll help the whole team do the same thing. And that's what needs to happen because we all know that Justin's not the most vocal guy. He's not a big rah-rah guy. He's going to need these vocal guys to come alongside him and help lead the team. Mm -hmm. So I think a perf even though we lost, an individual performance like that uh, will help Keenan be like, wow, this guy, this guy's got it. We're, we got something going here. Let's rally behind this guy. Cause um, I think 13 catches for 132 yards and a touchdown. That's a, that's a big time stat line. Yeah, it is. Um, that's, that's hard to do no matter, no matter who's throwing you the ball. So um, that's awesome. And then my, one of my other favorite things that happened was our defense. I already mentioned this a little bit was our defense holding them to five field goals. That just, man, you yeah. turn that that's, that's 15 points. That could have been 35. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so that that's that's a huge huge deal to keep those guys getting out from the getting in the end zone uh, that kept us in the game. So that that our defense is still is still firing even though we lost a couple of big guys um, down in the interior on the defensive line. It was still able to to get the job done. Absolutely, yeah. I think Herbert really has the potential to be to be a real strong leader. It, seeing him play in that second game against the Kansas City Chiefs, the the. Uh, motion and energy that he had when we were getting the touchdowns and we were making those plays like that, I, that reminded me of Philip rivers. Like he's, yeah. he's a, he's a calm enough and cool enough guy that, you know, if he makes a mistake, he can recognize it and he can fix it sometimes within the same game. He can fix those mistakes. Um, but he also brings some of that energy. He doesn't, 
you know, just quietly go off to the side after he scores a touchdown. Like he he's, he's cheering on with the fellow teammates. So that, that kind of brought a little bit of a smile to my face, seeing that big, you know, God, he's, he's such a fresh college kid. He's got such a baby face. Seeing that big smile on yeah. his face was just like, it's, it's infectious. So um, yeah. I'm really excited to see Herbert and and the potential that he has, and he's going to have it going in next week against the Bucks. But before we get there, uh, let's look at what some of our least favorite moments of the game, uh, Kev. What were what were yeah, some mine of your least the, favorites? Mine are the goddamn zebras, <laughs> man. Those fucking zebras. It was um, it was rough. There's three th- three that were specific to me that I was just kind of in awe. Usually, you know. When they make these big game changing decisions, you know, they they don't come in these kind of bunches, at least from my experience, I may be wrong. The first one was the Herbert fumble that did not look like a fumble. I don't know how you throw the ball 15, 20 yards down the field while fumbling. Doesn't make sense to me. Maybe there's smarter football minds that can explain that better. But don't try because I've already made up my mind. Uh, second, uh, Williams non-existent offensive pass interference call that was, was so the ridiculous. more horse shit thing i have seen in so long and it totally just destroyed our momentum and was so egregious it, everyone in that commentating booth agreed with that so that was just unbelievable and then the 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 zebes decided to go and get you know gather up a whole bunch of uh you know accoutrement they grabbed uh they grabbed some whipped cream they grabbed some cherries they grabbed some some sprinkles <laughs> and when we when we had that non that non non touchback at the very end, those assholes just put all that on top of the game. Just <laughs> whipped cream, sprinkles, and a cherry, just to send us off into the night. It was the most unrealistic thing I've ever seen. His full momentum was going forward. He didn't stop and m- maintain control. I, I, what, what other time have you ever seen this happen? I've never seen this happen. He threw well, the he ball would have never, behind him. Yeah, he would have he never would have thrown, thrown the ball backwards. Right. No, I, I just stopped. I don't see how this could happen. And and I'm so fucking pissed about this. Like <laughs> this one Pacific play. I was so angry. And then I think this is the one thing that kind of sent me off into the into the Brian song <laughs> night. I was just like, this is so this is so unfair. This is so unfair. And yeah, it was unfair. Yeah, um, it was not cool. It was not. I don't know. Fair. That's that's. It was. Uh, they got in the way of the game, in my opinion. They just completely got in the way of the game. So, what about you, Kyle? What was yours? Um, mine's very repetitive because I think it's the same thing as last week. It's these freaking offsides penalties that we continue to commit. I cannot believe that we can't stay on side. I you, okay, Patrick Mahomes. Oh, he used his snap count to get us uh, Teddy Bridgewater. He hasn't even right. played in like three years. <laughs> yeah, and he's drawing up like Joey jumps on 33 jumps offside. Like, are you, are you kidding me, dude? Just chill, cool your jets. Like yep. we're just handing them first downs here, left and right. You cannot continue to do this crap because the Justin Herbert pick, the sack strip sack, those things are in the games. Ha- like the, especially the Kelly fumble. He got hit weird while he's going down. Like so, that stuff's going to happen. Jumping off sides on third and three, you can control that. Stop it. Knock it off. That's a mental mm-hmm. mistake. You know, like that bad cannot baby, continue baby. to happen. I just, that stuff, that yeah. stuff really, really grinds my gears. So yeah, that was my <laughs> least favorite play of the game. Yeah. I, I mean, it kind of in the same vein was the, uh, was the penalty that we got for lining up on the center on a field goal oh, kick and after getting that penalty yeah. ends up Damian getting him. Yeah. Ends up giving them the, Darn it, Wooly, the I touchdown forgot about that one. That, I mean that to me, I mean, just like you say, like these are veteran players. They should know not to jump off sides. They should also know where the fuck to line up on the <laughs> damn line when they're kicking a field goal. Like, come on. Oh, like, you, man, I forgot. If you got to know, like you one. can't be in this spot, don't be in this spot. Dude, like just just crazy be somewhere is, else. There's like, there's a couple of rules that, that, that go from Pop Warner football all the way to the NFL and they don't change. That's one of them. You can yeah. never line up on the center ever. And it's like you're you screamed at about that from the time you're like eight years old until you're 30 and you still mess it up and you're getting picked. It's unbelievable. To yeah, me. I forgot about that. Gosh darn it. Wooly. I mean, well, that one was, that that one was, was big too because right after that, when we go back to the goddamn zebras, there was like, a, I went back and looked at it. There was an awful clipping block on Tillery. It was like egregious. Go back and watch that. It was it was insane. Somebody pointed that out on 
on Reddit, and I was like, all right, let me get into this Game Pass, and it was there. So hmm. thank you, Zebras assholes. <laughs> I got to find out who that team is. I want to find out who that officiating crew is. What are you going to do? And just pray to God we never get him again. You're going to write a letter? Oh, no, and I'm sure there's some. I'm sure there's some things we could do. Write, write a, a, a petition. Well, I'm yeah. sure Lynn is a strongly worded letter. I'm or sure Lynn is already writing a strongly worded letter to the. Uh, Dude, we got we got some great fans that <laughs> yeah, listen to our podcast. Know. Like, we, let's find them on Twitter. Do some yeah, work, guys. We'll get a do some work. Going. And I'm not inciting <laughs> violence or anything. Just, just do some work. Just, yeah, just letters. use your words. Yeah, use your words. Use your words. Use your words. All right. Well, we've got a kind of a special little segment here. Uh, Ask Twitter. We had a shout out from Superbolts24 after this last loss. Is Tom Telesco and Coach Lynn on the hot seat? If not, shouldn't they be? I I, Uh, I, I don't think so. I don't think so. It's way too early. The injury bug has hit our team. It's just too much too soon in my Yeah. Okay, so what's the job of the GM is to bring in talented players. We have one of the most talented rosters every single year. That's what all the analysts say. Can we ever put it together? No, no, we can't. But that doesn't mean we don't have a talented roster. That's the GM's job. Whether they get hurt or not, it's not always he's going to be able to decide that in the way that he brings in these players. So I think I think he's done a hell of a job bringing in great talent. Yeah, absolutely. And Coach Lynn, everything that I I've watched so many of these these hard knocks, I am that much more behind Coach Lynn and the man and leader that he is. Are you going to win every single game? No. Are we still building a little bit of that culture? I think so. I I I I I don't want to jump ship after three years. Let the guy have no. like five or six, and then if he's still not getting it done, then all right, we've he, he's had an opportunity to put in his system. His his culture is here. If it's still not happening, all right, let's go. Yeah, and what do we do? We want another McCoy. Do we not want another one of these like guys that was a hot offensive coordinator to come in and like it's not it doesn't make sense like even if it, it is i'm not even gonna say it i'm not even gonna say what i was gonna say go ahead Adam. no it, it it's it's not like it's coach lynn and tom telesco out there getting turnovers and getting injured like they're just the guys that are running the ship and doing the best they can with what they got right. if the, if the tool breaks that's not their fault they they got to go to the next screwdriver that they have in the drawer and if hoping that that fits the hole and does what it needs to do and honestly like look at all the other teams in the league how many other teams have had some there's a lot of teams that have had the injuries that we've had mm-hmm. oh, how God. many teams have had to go from a their plan starting quarterback to their first round draft pick who didn't have an offseason barely had a, a training camp like there's been a lot of tumultuous shit going on for our team absolutely i think we need to reserve this and wait for a while yeah. before we make any harsh judgments like that yeah but let's respect that respect the uh twitter question and we're gonna absolutely definitely yeah uh, definitely have more of those every week we'll, we'll uh we'll post if you guys have anything just uh, hit us back yeah there's probably fans out there that do in their minds they are on the hot seat for sure um right. but i just yeah I'm not, I'm not ready to go there yet i i'm not either and and let's not forget that for a hot minute we almost saw easton stick take the field there folks there was a hit <laughs> uh that herbert took that uh-huh. it scared a lot of us uh, when he wasn't able to get back up and Easton stick was warm up on the sideline. I'll be honest with you. I kind of wanted to see Easton stick, just take a pass just to kind of get a feel for what's going to happen. It chances are, it was going to be a run play anyways, but still it just would have been good to see him take the field, but Chargers ended up taking a timeout and letting Herbert get back out there. I think that, I think that was the thing I asked Kyle when we were watching that together. I was like, wow, they don't want him in so bad. They're willing to burn a timeout to get Herbert back in there. I think that that says well, a Herbert, lot. Herbert did come it's, back in and he converted the third down with a nice little pass. Yeah, like clap my stats. So they they yeah. speak for themselves. Absolutely. But I just like the, the Easton stick point of people being like Easton stick, Easton stick. Like it's hard to I put kinda just, up, man. I, I, it's hard, to, it's hard to put him in that good. spot, man. That's a tough spot to put a guy third in. Down. Right. Yeah, but burning a timeout or giving him that an sucked. opportunity. It was to a crappy situation. Down. Herbert should have sucked yeah. it up. Well, he did. He should have got up quicker. Yeah, you should have sucked it up faster. You should have taken a it. deep breath. Oh, Fill those lungs back up. You make that what, 20 next that, time, big was guy. That, was that an attack at me, Adam? Because I can't no. take deep breaths right now? I'm just saying, if if he fractured some ribs, and Whoa. we know that all you yeah, need to do is take did, a deep breath, no, and you're okay. If he for sure did <laughs> fracture a rib, he should never have gone back in the game, because I'm, st- I'm three weeks out and still in pain. I know. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's, it, it's just been that kind of a season where the yeah. chances are that stick comes in i mean 
you've got a we've got our main quarterback that had a freaking lung collapse on him. Uh, and then we've got Herbert, who is a fresh, brand new rookie quarterback. East and sick is sitting back there. I mean, if it happens, it happens. I'm I'm not going to complain about it. I'm always right. going to support whoever's slinging the, here's the a, ball. Here's a fun, here's a fun question, know. guys. So those are the only that. two quarterbacks on the roster. What happens if the if Easton Stick gets hurt? Who are you putting <laughs> who out is there? The third who, string who would, you, who would you put out Badgley. there? Badgley, Badgley <laughs> for sure. The money, one hundred percent Badgley. Just the confidence. At that point, you just need. I don't confidence. know. I've seen Keenan throw the rock a little bit on some of the behind the scenes stuff, and he can he can whip it. I don't know, not backwards, maybe forwards. Hopefully, hopefully Ingram gets healthy again before that happens, because I think Ingram might actually be yeah, that multi purpose yeah, tool that can go out there. Probably, and probably is like the, that's what I'm on, saying. On the depth chart, I'm somewhere serious. Yeah, as emergency, as yeah. an emergency <laughs> quarterback. Um, all right, enough of that business. Thank you, Super Bowls, for uh, giving us a lot to talk about there. Uh, and yeah, keep, keep throwing questions at us folks. It's, and it's okay to disagree. You know, it's understandable to have that kind of knee jerk reaction of should these guys be on the hot seat, but we got to remember what year this is guys. Like this is, we're not, we're not playing with all the fresh, uh, it's talent that we early. should have. It's a little we got a early. lot of guys that are injured and we're just, we're working with what we got and we can, we can't make miracles happen every week. Let's take a look at the injury report. Uh, as we mentioned, Chris Harris Jr. Uh, injured his ding dang foot, so we put him on injured reserve. And guess who's back? Back, back again. again. Uh, dies back. Tell, Don't your, tell friend. your friends. <laughs> Don't tell They'll fans. They'll be pissed. They'll be pissed. They'll be pissed. <laughs> no, but like Harris going down with his foot, man. Like it said, they said a month, possibly six weeks. Like that's God. a long. Dang it. Man. It's a long time so, for a new player to this team. We just don't have, we don't have, like, we came. I'm so glad we had the depth we had when we came into this season because <laughs> we have to. We're getting down there, man. <laughs> we, we're we're going to need some of these guys to get back here soon because, yeah. you know, you don't want to have to sign Julio Ladai to come in and, and play snaps. Yep. You know, you don't want to have to have that happen. Like, you couldn't find a team this year. You don't necessarily want that. Right. Am I going to be pissed off that he's there? No. Am I going to watch the videos people post of him getting burned? Probably by accident, but you know, it is, it is what it is and we'll, we'll survive. The, it's the best yeah. that we got right now. And yeah. if it's the best we got, we got to support these guys. Let's man. go. We yeah. He's a, he's yeah. a charger again. Let's go. Yeah. He's back. Yep. Um, and the Bulaga, Brian Bulaga, Iowa, he is back. I didn't know his back was the oh, issue man. last time he got hurt. So Good that's the mobility. God, if your back's down, that would explain why he's not able to, you know what, what you were doing in the in the coach's corner, Kyle. It, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It was unfortunate to see Mike Williams added to that list as well. I it, it it dawned on me about halfway through. I think it was the second half. I was like, wait, where's Mike Williams? He's yeah, he's been getting tosses, and now he's not there. And then they showed him on the sideline. I was like, oh man, come on. It was on. after that big catch, I believe that that the zebras ruined. Mm. Um, is when he kind of stayed on the field and kind of needed some help. So yeah. Yeah, they didn't really talk about it much more, but yeah, he was out. Sucked. He's huge for us. He is. He's a big, tall receiver, and and we need him right now. So those are the injuries that we have right now. I'm sure some surprise ones will show up on the injury report later on this week. But uh, the next game we've Hopefully got. Hopefully no collapsed lungs. Please, no collapsed, no collapsed lungs. lungs. Uh, <laughs> Doc. Um, <laughs> so the next game we've got to look forward to, folks, is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers playing in Tampa Bay. Uh, it's going to be an earlier game. That one we're looking forward to some powder blue jerseys with gold Ooh. pants. I'll be honest with you. I like I'm those gold pants, those. baby. I, yeah. I think those uh, are, this hot. is my favorite. I, w I wanted to look up and see what uniforms that were this week. Cause people were asking on Twitter at the beginning of this game, like, what are we wearing? What are we wearing? Looked it up. It is. This is my favorite combo. Oh, yeah, it's, it's the powder so blue with the gold pants. First time we've worn this. I'm ready. I'm feeling good about this boys. Excellent. Feeling good. Excellent. All right. Yeah, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tom Brady, he's sitting right now with uh, two recent wins. He only lost that first opening game, but uh, they're on a bit of a streak right now, unfortunately. Looking at the Bucs defense, though, through the first three games, the Buccaneers are allowing just 20 points per game while allowing the second lowest yards per carry and the seventh lowest quarterback rating. Tampa Bay has currently 12 sacks. My what? goodness. Yeah. And the yards per carry, I think it's a big deal. I think this is going to be, this is going to say how we're going to compete with them. They've been holding people to 2.9 yards per carry. I think if our, our quick, awesome running backs can raise this number, 
I think it's going to be a different, I think that's something to look for. Absolutely. Well, I mean, Chargers have scored more than 20 points this season, so maybe we can get the edge and bump that up just a little bit, but we can at least hope to get 20 points. <laughs> it's the thing with Brady, like in this year has been interesting because he's thrown three picks. Like he hasn't been Brady a Brady, you know, Q, uh, QBR rating like week one, he was a 29% and then 58 and then 52. Like, he just doesn't, he looks like old man Tom. He just looks old. And I think controlling the <laughs> clock is, is so important. It's as important as it is every week, but controlling the clock here is going to be huge for us. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's going to come down if we can run the ball. The reason they're getting so many sacks is they're getting up on teams these last couple of weeks, uh, forced him to throw the ball a lot. Um, and if you can't run the ball, you're in positions where you have to throw and the defense knows you're going to throw. If you can get into those third and two, third and threes, everything's kind of on the table. They don't know for sure. They can't dial up blitzes. They can't get those sacks. So staying ahead of the chains, it's always important. So yeah, it's just all the little stuff. We can't turn the ball over. If we have, if we yeah. win the turnover game, we're going to win the game. I'm, I'm not confident in our defense that as long as we don't give them free opportunities, we're going to win the game. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. If we, if we didn't have the turnovers this last game, it would have been completely different. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens this next week. But now we've got to look forward to our fan focus. Jack, Jack, who is Jack? Who is that Jack? <laughs> Jack is our, an international bolt fan. Holy down smokes. From, yeah. So I won't, I will, we'll, we'll, you'll look, you can guess you kind of, kind of ruined it there, but you can guess by his accent. <laughs> we'll let you guess where he's from. There was no, Absolutely. you didn't tell us you weren't going to say it was in the, in the notes here. It says Jack from <laughs> Sydney, Australia. I didn't know it was a, a, a guessing game. A new segment. Right, guess Kyle. the guess the fan Kyle, focus. Kyle, we can't. Kyle, we can't. Can't win them all, man. Coach's corner was great. You blew the lead on this. <laughs> oh, you so turned it God. over, Kyle. You know, so dumb. Sorry, buddy. Throw and it negative, to Jack. Just like our last put, put Jack on. <laughs> let's let's go across the pond, folks. See what Jack has to say. All right, we are here with Jack from Sydney, Australia. What is going on, man? Oh, it's great. How are you? I'm doing good, doing good. Thank you so much for coming on. And it's so awesome to be able to talk to some international Charger fans. So tell, let's, let's just start off right, right off the bat. Like, how did you become a Charger fan? Well, it, it all started probably like 10 years ago, I'd say, on a family holiday. We were in to, um, California. And basically, my big thing on that holiday was to um, get uh, an NFL jersey because I've been seeing some of the games here in you know early mornings before I go to school and I just wanted to you know sort of be more of a part of it and um, yeah we, so we ended up in San Diego and it was the first game I ever saw and the next day my dad took me out and um, bought me a jersey and I think it was oh, Ryan Matthews it's kind of interesting for me because I, I do a lot of traveling for work overseas. I'm in Europe a lot. And like trying to watch Charger games with the time zones is crazy. Like staying up super late or being up really early. So tell us a little bit about what you have to do to get ready for games. Well, yeah. So for me, most of the games or the two games we've had so far, I've started at six o'clock in the morning. Oh, man. Now I'm... You know, I'm a, I'm a bit of an early riser, so it, w it hasn't been too bad. But, um, you know, uh, especially week two against the Chiefs, I, I woke up. It was, pretty, it was pretty early, and I thought I was still asleep when I saw Herbert on the field. <laughs> so I was just like, uh, and I, you know, you rub your eyes and you think, hang on, I'm not, I'm not hallucinating. I'm not still asleep. This is really happening. So, um, but, yeah, the time zones are switching in Australia pretty soon, so... It, so the earlier games, it, it's a four four o'clock start, oh, but it's man. still um, but I'll, but I'm get I'll get up for him. I love so. it. I love it. Just like just getting out of bed this time for church because the problem I have is I have to wait till like three o'clock every day, and by that point I'm like, oh my god, I'm so like anxious and nervous, ready to go. Yeah, well, yeah. Sometimes I watch the first half still in bed and I get my laptop and then I'll get up for, for the second half and go sw switch on the TV. So that's awesome, man. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about like, you know, we're just trying to catch everyone's energies about the team right now. Like it was tough last week because we were all fairly positive after really giving the chiefs a run for their money. 
but this week we kind of played down to our opponents and we should have by all accounts beaten this team. What are some things that you would like to see them improve upon on what you saw this last week? Well, I mean, we're, we're start really in a few times. I think, yeah, you touch on the main point. We played down to them and we just gave up too many silly plays that shouldn't have, that shouldn't have happened on both sides of the ball and special teams for that man for that matter. And, you know, like say Damien Square, you know, get that lining up over the center. I don't know. How long has he been in the year? Like in the league, seven, eight years, something yeah, like that. It's not a real that, mistake. That's day one of special teams practice, right? Yeah. So it's just like, oh, okay, that's the first bit. Now, uh, I mean, another thing uh, uh, that wasn't a fumble. Yeah. That, that uh, like, I, I don't care who it is. Appreciating <laughs> it. Or looking at it, even if you're a Carolina Panthers fan, and you go, "Oh yeah, that's, of course that's a fumble." I, it's not. Yeah, he, it went pretty um, far downfield to be like a really legitimate fumble. Yeah, and another thing that's quite interesting as well is the, is it could be down to Herbert's throwing motion. Now I remember seeing a few things like in the pre-draft process, how when Herbert throws the ball, he's arm in the windup is almost parallel to the ground. So he's got a huge windup. So maybe that's a, could have been a contributing factor to that. But um, yeah, so that's a few things. And uh, an- another th- big thing I think is that this is the first game of the season that I've noticed the O-line. Yeah. And so, you, and you, you know, that what's the saying is like, you never notice an O-line until it's bad or whatever. Exactly. Whatever. They don't get the praise. They don't get the rewards. They only get called yeah. out when they do poorly. Yeah. So I think those are really the main things. Cause you know, we could, and we could have gone into the half at, at 12 to seven, not 18 to seven, Definitely. you know, with the, with the, um, the flag on the field goal. And then they turn that into six points. Great job by Jerry Tillery. Is that his second field goal block of the season? <laughs> no big well? deal. Just, yeah, no that's, big deal. Like, that's, that's amazing. Or extra point. Or, yeah. That could have put, given the offense more time to put a more methodical drive together at the end of the half that could have led to points, you know, instead of taking more time off the clock with the, however many plays it was after the flag. And then, which may have led to Herbert not throwing an interception and making a better decision in that, in that case. But um, yeah, so I think that those are really the main, a few things that have compiled it, that compiled a bad game almost. For sure. Well, and you know, it's, it's, it's easy to be negative. It's easy to see like, Oh, you, we sucked at this. We sucked at that. Oh my God, you suck. Why are we, why is he still in the league? Why is he still our coach? Let's all, we all sometimes need to take a breath on that stuff. And like, what are some of the positives or things you liked from the game that are, you're optimistic about? I mean, I, I mean, you, you can't miss Justin Herbert. He's just a f- honestly fantastic. I think he's played better than Joe Burrow. That might be a bit of a, a claim, but I actually, I actually did a bit of um, research myself. He's Herbert in two games has thrown 641 yards and Burrow's thrown 821. And then one extra game. Right? Yeah. But yeah. He's got an extra game. Admittedly, Burrow's got three more touchdowns, one less than inception, but Herbert's passer rating is better. The gap that was portrayed pre-draft between um, Herbert um, and Joe Burrow, and even um, uh, yeah, and even Tua and Joe Burrow and sure. Herbert, you know, I think I think he's played a lot really well, like fantastically well. Oh, well, it's the thing. It's the hype train thing. It's like he went to Oregon. He wasn't at the. He wasn't a champion that year. It's like here. It's. The, what I love about Herbert is that he was a four-year starter. Like he has experience. Burrow doesn't have the experience. Like he's a Burrow's phenomenal, but you know what Herbert was capable of doing by just getting put in last minute, last game by being on the one yard line and having to drive and almost getting that done. It's just incredible. Yeah. So I'm on the same page with you with, with uh, Herbert. Another thing is Austin Eckler. Wow. There wasn't anything as I think spectacular as that catch last week on like the, the two yard line, but it, it's almost something that you just you just see him. He gets the ball, and he, you don't have to worry about anything yeah. almost, which is a fantastic feeling. Absolutely. Um. Yeah. And so 
you know, a couple unfortunate things happened, but I think it we played okay. I think we played better last week, definitely against a you know a much better opponent. But um, yeah, I think that there is still a lot of positives to take. I like the I like the play calling better as well this week. A couple more interesting things happened. So yeah. Well, it's awesome, man. Well, hey, last question. Thank you so much again for coming on. So we're playing Tom Brady next week, and we're clearly the, the history we were just talking about. We play to our competition level. Um, we're going to be down a couple pieces, but what are your what are your predictions for this Buccaneers game? Well, um, you know, I I am very an optimistic fan, much like yourself, much like you guys. Um, I think it'll be a close one. Now, do we get the win? I I think we can. I, I very much think we can. I think if we plan for the defense a bit better, maybe not playing down to our opponents like we may have done this week, I think it could be a slim one. I think it'll be like maybe a, a 24-21. I like that. I think that's exactly what my bolt prediction is going to be this week. That's kind of Oh, wow. Right I just feel Sick. like de- our defense, like we're, I don't know what it is, and we're not putting up the points. There's... Well, I think I think you're right on right on the money with that, and yeah. we just got to we just got to shake up the old man Brady. That's what we got to do this week. Oh yeah, and Joey Bosa, it's his time to shine. Yeah, he's played so so well. Yeah, he's earned every bit of that millions and millions of dollars we just gave. Yeah. Him, so. Oh yes, definitely. All right. Well, hey Jack, thank you so much for coming on, man. We really appreciate it, and uh, thank you guys for having me. And yeah, it's been it's been great. Awesome, man. Well, hey, bolt up, and uh, we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah, the the dude is so cool. He like he like took he's at uni- he's at universities at school, and he took time to like stop from a class to come do and no be, you know, wow. do the interview. So that's just awesome. a good guy, man. I, I, I love to talk to like uh, fans that know like they can talk football. Like I could hang out with that guy and just go have a beer and just yeah, talk football right. with him. Like you know, just educated fans are awesome, and I'm glad you know it was nice talking to him. Yeah, and I, I thought I was dreaming too when Herbert came on the field. It was t- it was it was not even that early for us, but yeah, that's yeah. a that's a really funny story. But to the Sam rubs his eyes. Are, wait, wait, what? Huh? <laughs> what just happened? Yeah, exactly. five times so. two equals ten. What? <laughs> Dude, poor, poor guy's got to get up four a.m. to watch. That's unbelievable. This I don't game. know that I would do that. I might not be a Charger fan if I had to wake up at four a.m. Yeah, to watch the games. That's um, I, I a, apart from my love of football and the Chargers, I watched a little bit of English Premier League soccer, and it's the same time difference. Those games are six a.m. sometimes four a.m. It's crazy. So wow. yeah, you got to yeah, be very that's committed. A, that's a fan, man. Yeah. One well, good dedication. Team, he knows a yeah. he knows a lot about the team because yeah, he's awesome. he's committed, man. He's he's all in. Wow. So thanks a lot, Jack. We appreciate you reaching out. And uh, yeah, if you want to come on again, you let us know. Absolutely, I, I could listen to Jack talk. Just say our <laughs> team names, just all day long. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Awesome. We need to do some sound drops with him saying yeah. some stuff. We'll make it I our podcast it. 10 times better. It would be. All right. Well, we got a bolt prediction from Jack. Let's take a look at some of our own bolt predictions. I'm going to toss it over to Kyle. What are you thinking, big guy? Yeah. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty similar to, to Jack. He had 24, 21. I think it's going to be 24, 20. The bolts get the W. Um, and I have my bolt prediction is based on Mike Williams, possibly not playing a lot next week. Um, I have KJ Hill getting his first touchdown of Ooh. his NFL career. I like that. He came in there right. a little bit towards the end of the game there. Had a, had one little silly drop, but hit a couple other plays. So hopefully he can step up for us. Very nice. What about you, old dog? I'm going to go. God. It's a part of me that just wants to just blow up the score. But on the other hand, it's like, man, we really haven't scored more than 20 points this season. I'm going to go, I'm going to say 17 to 10. I think we, I think we keep Tom Brady to one touchdown. And I think here's my bull prediction. Jaleel Adai gets an interception. Ooh. Oh my God. I like it. Jaleel Adai like coming back. <laughs> Getting himself a big fat interception. I think it's going to happen. Nice. Oh my God. That's funny. I I love it. It'd be cool if he did. Or if he just goes, you know, the heat seeking missile he used to do and just go head first into somebody and take off somebody's head. You never know with the die, the 
the, the human missile. All right. Take us home, Huggin. All right. Well, I had simple. Um, 24 21. I agree with Jack. Um, and on this one, I got uh, Joey getting two sacks on old man Brady. Take that, old man. Brady. Take it, you old man. All right. Bolt predictions in the books. We'll find out what happens this Sunday. Chargers against the Buccaneers early game rise and shine. Everybody. That means you too, Jack. I want you up at 2 AM watching these games, buddy. (laughs) Show your dedication. That's going to do it for us here at charger chat. Don't forget folks to bolt up because we're ready for any squad, any place. Okay. Love you. Bye. Okay. Love you. Bye. Go pods. Okay. Love you. Bye. Yeah. Go pods. Slam Diego. Slam Diego. And now a word from our sponsors. Are you ready for the hottest track from Desmond King and the Whiny Magoos? Then get ready for this collection of the biggest tracks with some of your favorite hits. Like Gonna Need Answers. I continue to do my job, but I'm gonna need answers real soon. All right. If anybody know me, I'm the most humble person you will ever meet. Now you can have all your favorite hits on one compact disc or cassette. Is there a reason I'm not on the field? Some people want to know. Is there a reason I'm not on the field? Some people want to know. No way! never been a collection quite like this before until now christmas is just around the corner so be sure to order your copy of desmond king and the whitey magoo's best of collection order now to order call the number on your screen or send check or money order for the amount shown plus shipping and handling must be 18 years or older